All right guys, my name is Connor Kaminsky and in today's video, I'm gonna show you how to change strings on a Strandberg hardtail guitar. So, I know you're probably thinking, you probably wanna see how to change strings on a tremolo guitar. Don't worry, I'm gonna film that soon as well and take you through how to change strings on a trem. Um, but I thought first things first is, Let's just talk about the hardware of a Strandberg, everything about it from the locking nuts up here and the bridge and how you actually just tune it, just to get the basics first. So I'm going to take you through some things you need to change strings. Obviously you need a Strandberg, um, you need a, like a clip-on tuner, uh, you can have one that plugs into the jack as well, I just prefer like a little Daddario one that I've got here. You need a set of Allen keys, these come with every single Strandberg, I just use like this, like it's an ancient multi-tool with um, some typical guitar sized, Floyd sized Allen keys, and they work just fine on the Strandberg. You need a cleaning cloth because a good opportunity once you've changed strings is to give the guitar a good clean, wipe down the fretboard. That goes hand in hand with an old toothbrush. Um, if you had an ebony board or like a Pau Ferro board or a rosewood board, you'd probably need to maybe oil it, um, but I don't, so we're just gonna scrub it down with a toothbrush. A pair of string clippers as well, and last but not least, uh, the strings. I'm going to string up with Daddario 10 to 59. Strandbergs come with 9.5 to 64s, so we'll see how we do. I think it'll be absolutely fine. So on the top string, it'll be like a little bit harder to bend, I guess, and on the bottom strings, it'll have a bit less tension. First thing we need to do is obviously take off all the strings. Some people like to take off one string, especially with a Floyd or a floating trem. Uh, with a Strandberg hardtail, you just literally need to take all the strings off. So you can do that with either the big Allen key, uh, like wrench kind of thing that comes with a Strandberg, or you can just use your thumb and first finger to take off the strings. And you can go all the way slack, and these little kind of tuning screws will come off completely. If you do, then that's absolutely fine. I like to just take them down to where they're kind of about to come off, just because it's easier to, for me. Um, one or two might come off in, the, in this vid, but it doesn't really matter. Um, it's just so I know where they are. Once you've got all the strings slack, we'll take them through the bridge and then go from there. So I'm gonna use this as well, just cause it makes it easier. So that's how you'd use the Allen key, pretty much like that. And we'll go through and get rid of every string. Once all the strings are slack, all we're gonna do is take our, I don't know the measurement, I wanna say like two mil Allen key. You'll know the one to use. <laughs> but I just use this one all the time on this little multi-tool thing that I have. Up on here, I'm just gonna flip the guitar around for the other camera to see this a bit better. All we're gonna do here is ex exactly like a Floyd Rose, um, but there's not really, there's no floating trap, so we don't have to worry about that. So just undo the locking nut at the top for each string, like this. Um, for this part, I like to take the keys out completely. The little screws, set screws, I guess. Um, so I'm just gonna line them up here, like that. So I'm just gonna line up the set screws like that. Um, you probably wanna line these up on like a hard surface so you can keep track of them, but I'm just chucking them on the bed because it's easy for me right now. So, so far, it's pretty easy going. I know it seems a little bit different compared to like an, a standard guitar, electric guitar, but it's more um, akin to changing a Floyd Rose. Because um, you mess around with the bridge on a Floyd Rose as well with like the, um, like the fine tuners. Um, this is exactly the same premise, it's just there's not really any fine tuners, they're just the tuners and you don't have to deal with the whole headstock <laughs> past, past where the strings get cut off. Now that we've pretty much got rid of every string, out of the headstock, uh, I don't really know <laughs> what to call it, but once we've done that, you just thread them through. The thick string's gonna be a bit funny when they wanna come out, but there you go, like that. And then the other, this video will apply to a six string, a seven string, and also an eight string. Um, I've got the seven string here today. 
the black, I guess I didn't mention this before, but it's the um, Bowden seven string standard. And now that we've got all the strings off, they look like this. Um, we'll just thread them through the bridge. So every string should just come out. So fun fact is Strandbergs come with Dodarios. I see this question on the Facebook group a lot actually. And um, they come with NYXLs. And when people change strings first for the first time, they say like, oh, well, hold up, like where are the classic D Dodario colored ball ends? Um, but whenever they get shipped, they actually come without the coloured ball ends. That's the coloured ball ends are just for like consumers, but normally they just use golden ones for factories, like guitar factories. So if you are curious, they are NYXLs. Um, so yeah. So once you're done with these, just um, coil them up. It's just avoiding mess. If you let go of these strings, they'll go flying, and you'll end up snapping on one late at night by accident, and it will hurt <laughs> a lot. So I think Dodario has got a recycling program for guitar strings, so I definitely need to look into that um, and not put them in the bin because I think they probably some, I don't know exactly what they do with them on the program, but I'll look into that. And so yeah, these are the old strings and they're done. They've honestly been on this guitar for far too long. So now that we're at this point, don't throw the Stramberg around. I know you wouldn't do that normally, but don't do that because in the little locking string nuts I guess to call them yeah in the little locking string no I said that again <laughs> so in the little locking nuts there's because it's seven string there's seven little metal plates and they are tiny they're like um, about two mil in diameter and if you turn this guitar upside down maybe you want to clean the back of the, the guitar they'll come flying out they'll go rolling all over the carpet and you'll have a mission trying to find them so just be wary of that they do sit underneath the strings, so they can just stay in, the, in there right now. I guess if you wanted to give this a deep clean on the back as well, just chuck some masking tape over this. Or alternatively, do tip the guitar over, tip out the discs, and just collect them, and just line them up next to the keys here. Uh, the set screws, sorry. Um, but if you don't really want to do that, then just like me, I, I'm not really fussed about taking them out, and I'm not going to clean the back of the guitar other than just doing this with a cloth. Um, you can just leave them as is. Um, so now's a good time to give the guitar a bit of a clean. I kind of like doing this. It's kind of therapeutic a little bit. When you've got strings on a guitar, a load of dust and finger crud is going to like accrue around this area. So grab yourself like a cloth. I've just got like this gray cloth. It's like a microfiber thing, I think. But you can get your guitar, like an actual guitar brand to do them. Um, for pretty cheap so you can get them or you can just use like a supermarket bought one i guess just be careful not to get anything that's going to do damage to the finish just get like a nice good cloth and all you want to do here is just this goes for any guitar just give it a nice once over get right into the nooks and crannies of the guitar just those places that do build up dust like right between the neck and the, the actual fretboard end of the fretboard give the pickups a wipe as well and I get asked this question a lot too, it, it's what pickups are in the Stramberg standard series. And it's the OEM Stramberg pickups. It's just pickups that they've made themselves. And I was playing the uh, Bengal Burst the other day on, on a live stream on Instagram and everyone was like, whoa, the pickups sound insane. Like, is it, is it, are they Sir pickups? I was like, nah, they're just the OEM pickups that come in standard. So they are really, really good. And I, when I first got the guitars, I thought they were Sir pickups as well. So don't worry if you thought if you guessed wrong about that. You probably notice after like a couple months of having a Stramberg or any satin finished body on a guitar, you might have some glossy parts around here. Um, like if you rest your fingers, that's just the science of having a satin finished guitar. It just happens. It happens with satin necks as well. They eventually over time because of our, our skin, I guess, they do gloss over wherever your fingers are positioned for a long period of time. So like right here where the pickup selector is, where your fingers are brushing against the guitar, you'll probably notice glossy spots. There's not really an, a cure for that. It's just the known thing that happens to satin. But I think it still has many benefits over a gloss body or a gloss neck that I prefer, and especially a gloss fretboard. I know some fenders have those kind of things. You can go crazy and get compressed air and clean out the bridge pieces and everything like that. 
Um, but I, that's all I'm going to do. I, I'm happy enough with that. It's just getting rid of like the dust and stuff. They never really get crazy dirty if you take care of them anyway. Um, so next thing we're going to move on to is the old toothbrush. Um, you probably will have like an old full size manual one lying about, but I just had this spare electric head. So I'm using this tiny thing. And all you want to do with this is go across each fret. So I'll swap the guitar around again for the other camera. Just go across each fret with the toothbrush. If you have, I've seen that you can use wire wool, but I've not on a maple board because you will definitely have to tape off everything because it'll take off some wood. So I'm just going to use a toothbrush and it gets off like the finger crud like that will be on there that you just might not be able to see because it is maple. So just starting at the 24th fret, just give it a scrub like this. And depending on the brush, <laughs> the bristles, um, you might have to give it a bit more pressure than you might think and just work it. it don't worry it won't do anything to the frets because they're stainless steel and then just once you've done one fret move on to the next and like that so on and so forth and this is something I like to do every single time I change strings on a maple board purely because it can build up over like the course of two or three months in between string changes so it's always a good idea with all the strings off to clean as much as you can because you don't really get the opportunity otherwise unless you're doing a setup or something like that or making a change elsewhere where the strings have to come off like a pickup change you might want to do this um, but I guess it's most commonly going to be done when you are changing strings like me so as we go along just kind of stay within one fret at a time just going back and forth with the brush. So yeah, it might, it might not look like much is happening, but you'll probably see just on like here, around the logo, there's probably bits of dead skin that have come off the fretboard which is kind of disgusting but to be honest but yeah you know that's why we're cleaning it right um, so yeah it definitely gets rid of some of the crud that's on there which is a good thing because you don't want it to build up and start to cake itself into the board because if it gets to that point then you might need to get out of the wire wool or even take it to like a, if you don't want to wire wool it yourself you probably have to take it to like a luthier or something or like a guitar tech that'll be able to help you out with that so now that that's done, um, we'll just give it another quick once over with the cloth just around this area, um, just to wipe away any of the like the stuff that came off the board. And now for the best part, I guess it's putting the fresh strings on. So like I say, um, using 10 to 59 seven string set NYXLs, uh, I need to get my hands on some XTs for the seven string, but I've not really had chance. Um, but yeah, if you're changing strings for the first time on a Strandberg, I, I guess it's common knowledge just to keep this bag around so you can see which string's which. Um, but yeah, just snip it open with your string cutters like that and just rip it across. And then the strings in here will just come out. And Dodario are in groups of two, they'll usually come apart quite easily. So I'll just chuck the old strings back here. So that's six and five that's seven big chunky seven on its own and then this is one and two and that's three and four but just if you're a bit, a bit concerned like that's why it's so helpful to have the colors on the ball end so you know which is which string so let's go ahead and i'm going to show you how to get one string on and then literally for the rest of them it's a carbon copy method of how to get the strings on so i'm going to show you one string in depth and then i'll just go ahead and string up the rest of the guitar so let's flip it over again for the camera and I'll chuck on the E string, the six string, just cause I guess we'll just do that one. No real method to this. You can put them in any order, but I generally go from lowest to high. How you put on another string is I'll show for the camera here. I, I'll try and get the light to catch the end of the string. It looks like it's catching it, but you want to bend the end of the string in like um, like a curved shape and it's a it's just a bit of an easy it makes stuff easier when it goes through the bridge saddle if you don't do this it won't thread through 
um, you'll have to kind of pick it out. But this just makes it way easier if you just get like a nice little bend in the string, like that. So then we're going to come here and thread it straight through the back of the saddle. And that curve will come up. That's how you know you've done it right. And then thread it all the way through. And then pull it tight all the way through the bridge. And I'll just swap the guitar around just for the camera. <laughs> so now that we're here, you'll take this end, thread it through the lock and through the other side of it. Like that. Right. So once we're at that point, get one of these. It could be any of them, it doesn't really matter. And then just tuck it on top, screw it in with the Allen key that we used before to undo them. Now I usually change strings the other way around, so I'm gonna have to do it like this. Make sure when you're locking it down, you pull it quite tight. Don't go crazy, you don't need to give it too much, but you don't want it slack either, otherwise you'll be tuned in for years and years on this end. But the best part about a Schramberg is you get the, str the string quite tight before it's even, you know, been tuned up a little bit. And I see quite a few people getting this part a little bit wrong as well. Some people crank this thing way too hard and I've seen broken headstocks. Again, headstocks. I've seen broken head pieces up here because they've cranked it way too hard. It really doesn't need that much to hold the string. Just when you start feeling it bite a little bit, that's usually enough and you can just let go. And now the string is obviously still slack, but we'll flip it round again. And now I like to use the Allen key that comes with the Strandberg. But you, again, if, you've, if this is in a cupboard or somewhere or thrown away, you can just use your thumb and finger to do all of this. You don't need this. Like if you're on the road at a gig or something and you've got a string change and you don't have this with you, you can just do it like this and tune it up. You know, alternatively, what do you know about that? Easy as that. So now that string's at pitch, you're probably going to give it a few stretches. A good fail safe here is to check that this is actually properly engaged and, and locking down the string. If you give it a stretch, and it, it will drop a little bit because it's just getting rid of that slack. But if you give it a stretch and it goes like down an octave, you know that this is slipping back through here because it's not going to come from here. So just give that a check. It's good to stretch strings anyway. I'm sure a lot of you know that. It's the same thing for a Stramberg because Strandbergs are designed in such a way where there is basically no slack string. The Most of the time they'll go, you'll hear that's gone down like what? 30 or 40 cents, if that. I've just tuned that by ear. I don't, I don't really know if that's an E, but seems like it to me. So I'm going to go ahead and chuck the rest of the strings on. It follows the same idea of just chucking them through the bridge, saddle, pulling them tight through the lock, and then locking it down and tuning it up to pitch. Super easy. Not really much to it. About three steps and all that. I think it's pretty, probably even easier when you get quick at it than tuning a regular guitar because you don't have to properly wind it around the actual... Uh, like the, the um, God, what do you call them? Because I don't have them anymore. What do you call them? Sat, um, Jesus Christ. Tuning and you forgot what they're called. Not the locking nut, it's um, the, the tuners. Tuning heads, tuning heads, tuning heads, tuning heads? No, not pins, tuning heads. Tuning heads, I think. Tuners, I guess. Yeah, you don't have to mess around with them. You, you just lock the string down, you're good to go. So like I say, yeah, I'm gonna do the rest of them rapid. I'll probably speed it up because it's the same process. Um, and then we'll jump and then I'll show you what to do after you've got every single string on. So yeah, let's get to it.
All right, so once you've got all the strings up to pitch, just tune them by ear for now, or just get them to some sort of relative tension. I, I kind of use it as a little bit of ear training, I guess, to kind of try and get close to what standard tuning or whatever tuning you are going for. Um, final step really is to tune up, but um, if you're using a clip-on tuner, you'll have to get rid of all the strings first. It's dead easy. It's just taking string clippers that I mentioned at the start of the vid and um, going through and snipping off each string. So, that's seven strings hard to get to. <laughs> Um, so you usually want to leave about two mil. Some people leave it longer, it's not really a set rule. It's just in case if you do need to make any adjustments, you've got a bit of wiggle room to play with. Um, but yeah, like I say, the only thing to do after this is to tune up the guitar. So now that we've done that, just make sure you put these strings with the other ones because you will step on those and they will hurt. Or you'll put your finger through one by accident. Last thing to do is um, just pop on the, like whatever tuner you've got, plug into a tuner, put on the clip on one. This one from Dendario is really good because it fits the headstock pretty much perfectly like that. And then just clamp it down. And then just tune up like normal. Easy as that. So thanks for sticking around to the end of the video. Um, hopefully it was helpful if you change your strings along with me. Um, I figured I'd make this just because I still get some comments on my videos and people asking, how do you even tune a Strandberg? So that's why I went ahead and made this one. If you wanna see more videos like this, then do subscribe. I'm gonna be covering the tremolo string change ASAP as well. If you did enjoy it, give it a thumbs up and leave a comment if you've got any further questions, but I'll catch you next time, guys. Cheers.